In this segment, um, I want to go over some of the kind of neat things you can do. We've uh, figured out, and everyone's an expert now, right, on programming your radio. Go back and refer to the slides once we're posted. It'll, it'll sink in. Uh, you'll love it. All right. The 1.2 radio I talked about earlier, I won't spend a lot of time on this, but um, uh, it can be handy for sending higher speed data. Um, like I said, I've got mine, I brought it in previous years, but flying up I didn't bring it with me. Plus it had uh, batteries in it, so TSA probably would have loved me even less. Um, but I've got it mounted in a Pelican case, so it's a portable kind of standalone with a little router, wireless router in it and everything. Uh, the high-speed data mode can be very handy uh, if that comes into use. Um, when you register, you're assigned a, an IP address starting with 10. This is not a regular network address, but if you're going to run the digital data mode with an ID1, you need to go back and look at your registration and see what that 10 address is because you'll need to program that in the computer that you're using as its um, Ethernet address. If you're not, not going to run this, don't worry about it. Here's the way I set mine up that eliminated, that, that made that a lot easier. So I know what my 10 address was. I programmed that in the WAN side of my router, just a little cheap Linksys WRT54GL Linux-based router. Um, and then I'll use DHCP on the LAN side. So that way, whatever PC I connect, either wired or wireless, I don't have to worry about what that IP address was. So that kind of just takes that out of the picture. Plus, it'll create a little Wi-Fi hotspot then using DSTAR to get to the Internet. Again, not super fast, but faster than by most things that we're doing. All right, DV dongles. The first one was uh, made by Internet Labs. It's this little blue box. Um, it, was, it connects directly by a USB port. It allows you to access the DSTAR network through your computer connected to the Internet. Um, don't use the internal computer microphone. You will sound like bad. I was going to use another word. Um, so don't do that. Get you, even get you a little inexpensive computer headset. I got, a few years ago, I bought a Logitech um, headset. It was only about $30 or $40. It's USB with a little boom mic on it. I use that for my computer networking, whether I'm on like uh, WebEx or whatever, as well as it works great for using it, say, with a dongle. There are other devices out there that are in the DV dongle family. Um, one of them is... Um, the DV3K, which is the new version of the dongle. There's the, uh, the one by uh, Northwest Digital, which is functionally and almost electrically equivalent. The DV3000, I think, or Thumb DV? Thumb DV. Uh, and then there's the one that uh, Moencom has. It's more of the, the original dongle type, the last one here. Um, I forgot to update this slide, so. The, the uh, Thumb DV and the DV3K, I think, were announced last year. So those are available in the DV dongle family. What I like is they've shrunk down to the size of basically a thumb drive now. So that's, that's a lot smaller. I don't have one of those to show. The original DV access point, again, by Internet Labs, um, it's the same thing except they took out the vocoder chip and instead add a 10 milliwatt RF transceiver. So it creates a little hotspot. Again, it, cr it connects to your computer via USB. Uh, there's some software that runs on your computer. And uh, that allows you to walk around with your handheld. It, you use the same commands, linking, unlinking, from your radio, just like you would through a repeater, but you're running through your own little hotspot. Some people have connected it up to an outside antenna to get more range. That's okay, but keep in mind that's not the most, the best filtered output on that. So I don't connect it to an amplifier or anything. 
that would be bad. But, uh, you know, you can't put a little better antenna. I've just got one of the little stubby ducks that I call a leaky dummy load um, for use on it. But, you know, that's the size of it um, with the USB on the bottom. The uh, originally, I used a, uh, a netbook because I, I wanted to I wanted to make this my mobile hotspot. So when I'm driving from Atlanta to Orlando and I go through repeater no man's land, I'd have this in the, in the uh, car and I'd have my little Verizon MiFi to get internet access to my netbook and then connect my DV access point. And that was a way to really do that. It took up space in the back seat. Then came along a Raspberry Pi. Love that little thing. And, the, and even the newest one, the Pi 3, much faster, didn't it go to a quad-core processor? Uh, what's the speed on it? 1.2, I think. Yeah, um, I haven't really done much with mine yet, but I haven't had time yet. But that allows you to do a whole lot more. The first thing I did was I, I, I put it together in a box. And I had an external antenna, and this is a small little tiny Pelican case, and I can use it in the car or plug it in there. So I used uh, one of those cell phone charger batteries uh, to power it, and then I had the Raspberry Pi, and then connected to the DVAP. That was my little configuration in a box. Here it is. I just drilled a hole there so the antenna can come out. That's, that's mine in a box, which is still just basically the Raspberry Pi and the, the DVAP. Uh, right now I don't have my, my cell phone battery in there. All right, I keep getting uh, a little better configuration. Um, if you want to make that work, uh, there's a couple of places you can get some images for your Raspberry Pi. Uh, again, you know, on the Raspberry Pi, you don't have a hard drive. You don't have really memory. You have an SD card. That's everything. Uh, I like the Maryland D-Star images that are out there. They are pretty universal for just about all of the different uh, versions of this. Um, and they've just updated a new version for the Pi 3, if you have one of those. Uh, you will install the Linux operating system image to the SD card. There's a program out there called Win32 Disk Imager, and it basically writes that entire image file that you download from one of these sites to the SD card, and then you just power it up and you configure it uh, with your call sign and, and how you want to configure it. So that works, up, works very well. Um, that will work with the DV, DVAP. You can configure you add the software for either DVAP tool, which is the original software that worked with, uh, provided by Internet Labs, DV, DVAP node, or uh, you can even run IRC DDB on it. <clears throat> Those are all available. You configure it for what um, Wi-Fi hotspot that you're using to get internet. And I'll usually run mine headless, so I just plug in the power and the internet to it, and it comes up, boots up, and it's ready to go. Now, I took uh, another step. Uh, when did this come out? The DV Mega Board is a daughter board which fits right on the Raspberry Pi I.O. connectors. There's a, a double header there. And it will sit right on top of it. And it has a little SMA right there. So I found this little case from MCM Electronics. They're right down the road here in Ohio. Um, it would fit in there and I could close the cover on the case. The problem was that old SMA connector stuck up. Well, after measuring for about 30 minutes to find the center, I drilled that hole out. And so now that setup that I've got over in that Pelican case is this. Add my battery and my internet connection and I'm good. Now with the Pi 3, Pi 3 has built-in internet, doesn't it? Or it has Bluetooth. 
Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So I gotta, I gotta update again. <laughs> yeah, an MCM I think has well they, they don't bring a whole lot with them, but uh, they're they're good folks. <laughs> All right, this ask the question: What's the difference in these? This is basically this connected with a computer. So the Pi is the computer. The daughter board, the DV Mega, is the this. And put them together so now I don't have to take a computer with me and connect that. We're getting smaller, guys. All right, somebody came along, this company in Tennessee called Harden Power Systems. They built a rock-solid little box out of uh, high-impact plastic that combined a battery source, uh, a DVAP, uh, a Pi, and th you could almost hammer nails with this case. Uh, and then it had the metering on the end and all, brought all the connectors out. That was their first version of that. Now they've come out with the Mini Mega that uses either the DVAP or the DV Mega daughter board, two versions of it. And that's a clamshell. They actually make this on a 3D printer. And that it's a clamshell. The batteries go over on this side. It'll hold four of those, um, what's that new style battery? They're, I, I think they're the, the lithium batteries, the lithium ion batteries. They're the, uh, they're bigger than a, is that what it's called? 18 something, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah, they're bigger than a double A. Uh, they come in all sizes. I think I've got four of them that are uh, 4,000 milliamp hour each. So there's a way to do that, another way to do it. All right. Now I'm kind of going to go into devices. Many of these have become multi mode devices. So if you do D star, if you do DMR, if you do fusion, they will, they will do all of those modes. I tell you today about it because we're focusing on DSTAR here, but that allows you also, this is like a, the DV4 Mini um, came out, it's made in Germany, it's imported through a company in South Florida. So this is the DV4 Mini. It's a little bigger than, slightly bigger than a USB thumb drive. And you have an antenna on the end. And that's like a DVAP on a stick. So I just plug it in. I've got software that runs. Um, you can run it on a Pi as well. So that's another version. Wireless Holdings is the company that uh, imports that, and I think they're here. Yes, they, are. Um, they will be here. See Uli, he's the, the owner of the company. If, and I don't know if they bought, uh, brought the, the other guy from Germany uh, who writes the, the code that goes on uh, the computer to run it. But the neat thing about these is you can start doing multiple modes. If you've got a, a D-Star radio, a DMR radio, or a Fusion radio, uh, you can do it. Now, the one thing to keep in mind, you can access any of the D-Star reflectors in any of the flavors, DCS, XRF, REF. You can, on DMR, you can only access certain reflectors that are connected to certain talk groups. So it doesn't give you complete access to the DMR world. Um, and same thing for Fusion. Well, Fusion networking is not quite there yet anyway. So, but it is something to explore. Uh, something that was just introduced is a uh, kind of a DV4 Mini on steroids version. It's actually a full radio. Uh, they're supposed to be showing it here. Again, this is the wireless holdings people, that this is a software-defined radio. Uh, and it does 2 meter, 220, and 70 centimeters. Um, it will operate all the different modes. Uh, it's not yet available, but they're saying fourth quarter this year. Uh, we'll see if they're able to do that. 
Uh, it's kind of like the plan that uh, Connect Systems uh, was coming out with their CS7000 that was going to do DSTAR and, and uh, DMR. Uh, however, they've been really delayed on that one. We don't see that one yet. But this one looks like it's a lot closer to being a real radio. Anyone have a 9100? No one in here? Um, pardon? Um, it's an HF radio. Well, it's an all-band radio. It, it, uh, let me see. No, it, does it do? Does it do two meter 440? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's an all-band radio, but the distinction here is you can do HF on D star. I mean D star on HF. Um, it's D star on HF is fun to play with. Is it going to replace single sideband? No way. It's a very wide signal as far as HF goes. We consider it narrow on two meters and 70 centimeters, but on um, HF, it's about the width of an AM signal, about six kilohertz wide. It's also subject to fading. If you get much fading, it doesn't work as well. However, there's a, a net that's running um, called the International D-Star HF Net. Uh, you can find information about it on dstarinfo.com on that link. They have a net on about three or four times a week. Um, they're making contacts all over the world. I've got a 7100, uh, and I wanted to try this. The first contact I made was a station in Arizona on 15 meters. It was strange. It sounded just like I was on my handheld. No static at all. Um, and then he kind of faded out. <laughs> so, but they uh, have a round table and they're making contacts all around the world on HF. So kind of fun thing to try. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, their times. They post the net times. Um, the 7100 is, uh, that's the radio on the right. Um, it's been out two years now, I think. It's an all-band radio. It's kind of a mobile configuration. Uh, it's kind of unique because it has that sloping face on the head. Um, I had it in my truck for a while uh, where I'd replaced a, a Yezu 857 with it, so I'd have D-Star capability as well as that, but I'm not out in the hinterlands as much, so I replaced that with a 5100, but that's my, I use my 7100 as my go kit radio. Because I can do, I can do anything with that radio. In fact, I operate it as a. Uh, it, what's nice about these radios is, uh, and, and to a certain extent, the 5100 as well. It's a USB interface to the radio. It's almost plug and play. So if you're running um, uh, ham radio deluxe, uh, especially in digital modes, uh, our club operated Winter Field Day for the first time. I was the digital station with my 7100 running th with that laptop, uh, running PSK, and I, one connection, USB. That was nice. Was there a question? Yes. Was that the one you were able to uh, The 7100? Um, not all, but you can update your repeater list because it does have an SD card in it, a full size SD. Have you seen the Android app for the uh, uh, certain models of the radios, the, the 51 uh, mainly, and it, it will actually run with the 7100? Um, you connect with a special cable, and it does take this special cable, the OPC2350LU is the ICOM number for it. Uh, but if you're running a 5100 um, and you have the Bluetooth adapter in it, you can just do a Bluetooth connection to your Android tablet. Uh, and that gives you some extra features. I'm trying to think if there are any limitations on that. I can't, I, I can't really give you a good answer on that. At least four. So if you're pre-Android 4, 
one of those versions, you might have a problem. All right, DV Pro. Uh, the gentleman that does the dstarinfo.com site, Ed, WA4YH, made a little program that using your um, uh, RT Systems Orange cable, um, you can do a lot of functionality that uh, uh, the reason he came up with this is if you're running a net on D-Star, being able to see, yeah, you can read the call sign of the station calling on your radio, but being able to get that information on a display and have it continue to do that with a net. Um, Amy's not in here, but Amy is Ed's uh, XYL, and she does net control some weeks on our Southeast D-Star weather net, where we'll have about 75 people checking in across 25 states and uh, she runs net control and she uses the DV Pro software and never picks up a pen or a pencil to write down call signs because they're all displayed on this. That's a free program. You can download it off of dstarinfo.com. Yes. If you don't have the RT systems cable, you just need to get it anyway because you're going to need it eventually. <laughs> and I don't get a commission from them. DRATS. Has anybody run DRATS? Uh, if you are in an MCOM organization, uh, you may be more familiar with it. Uh, DRATS is a very full featured program for DSTAR data. Um, unfortunately, the gentleman who wrote the original software, Dan Smith, has moved on to some other things, but uh, I think there's a couple of folks going to pick up the uh, uh, development on DRATS, which will be a good thing. Um, it, uh, it, you got a lot of functionality, uh, file transfer. Uh, if you're in a MCOM type setup, uh, you know, if you need to, you can do forms, you can do file transformer, you can do messaging, uh, all kinds of different functions um, that works well for that. And it's a free program. Uh, you can get the latest version off of dstarinfo.com. I'll, I'll refer you there as well. All right. We're coming to the end, and uh, somebody needs this radio in here. Uh, who is there anyone who doesn't want? I'll, I'll take your ticket back. <laughs> I'm not getting you volunteers. All right. All right. Everybody got your ticket. Before I do this, uh, very quickly, any any final questions? Yes. No, if you use one of the, uh, no, you're, you can't import CSVs, but you can import settings files, which uh, will be, you can, you can download still the same way you want. Uh, you'll just use a different one of them on uh, the download section. Mm -hmm. On DSTAR Info, yeah. Uh, well, had, your SD card, do you have a computer you can write the SD card? You'll write it, again, you want to format the SD card and you'll save the ICF file in the settings folder. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, not as a download. Pardon? Um, you're, uh, you're, well, you're, unfortunately, for reflectors, you're probably going to have to enter those directly. Right. Right. Yes. I have not tried to do that. Um, and I'm not sure how well it would work. Yeah. FL Digi works well with FM. Um, now I run it. I'll run FL Digi through any of my DSTAR radios, but in FM mode. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it makes it easy to run with those radios. Um, you can use. Um, well, they've even updated. Well, no, I'm, that's a that's a different topic. Um, you can use either FL Rig to uh, use FL Digi with, 
like a 7100 or some of those radios, or uh, what's the other interface that they use in FL Digi? Um, F F FL Rig is what I use, but there's another one built in to the software. Um, the libraries of, of some kind, I forget what it is. No, no, it's built into the FL Digi module. They're XML files. You select them under the rig. All right. Um, did, I, I guess everyone's got theirs in here. I hate to be the one to pick it out. So, yeah, you're, you're, yeah, come up here. You're in the form. I didn't introduce, I'm, <laughs> I didn't introduce Rob. Uh, this is Rob Calf or SBT and Amy that you checked in with earlier. Um, I just went blank on her call. I'm sorry, What's Amy. KE4IKF. Yes. Amy, Amy does so much behind. She is uh, Mrs. Ed, but um, I didn't say Mr. Ed. That's what she calls him. But. <laughs> Uh, she, uh, Amy does so much behind the scenes to help us with everything, uh, and I, like I said, she's one of our best net controls for the Southeast D-Star weather net. Sunday nights, 9 p.m., Reflector 2 Alpha. All right, Rob's going to pick one. I feel like I could see the numbers. Okay. You ready? Number one. Five thirty four is the last three. Got all the capture. <laughs> Did you get it? Can you believe that? Well <laughs> I've got to uh, I have got to uh, congratulate Terry. Terry doesn't just sign up for this class. How many people did you bring with you? So, uh, Terry does a lot with D-Star uh, up in the Michigan area, and uh, we chat a couple times a year. So it's good to see you, and congratulations. Thank you for all your help and all you do. 